We'll now look at one final family of, uh, of filters. And it's known as the band reject filter. It's easiest to understand the band reject by comparing it to the pass band filter. So, so we've already studied the pass band filter, which is a filter that passes a certain relatively narrow range of frequencies. It consists of a series RLC circuit where the output voltage is taken across the resistor. The band reject filter is exactly the same circuit, except now we're looking at across the series combination of the capacitor and the inductor for our output voltage. So it stands to reason then that if in the passband filter certain frequencies showed up here and all of the rest of them were um, to a greater or lesser extent attenuated across the series resistance here, and that band of filters, the band of uh, frequencies came through here. Then if we look at, instead of looking here, we look here, i.e. look across the series combination, we're going to see the, the signal or the power here that we didn't see there. So the pass band filter and the band reject filter are kind of complementary uh, structures of each other. This one gives you what this one didn't. To understand this, let's um, take a look at the series equivalent of those two impedances. Z equivalent is equal to 1 over Cs plus Ls. And if we get that over a common denominator, that's equal to 1 plus Lcs squared over Cs. Now if we replace s with j omega so we can see the, see the explicit um, frequency dependency, we get z equivalent as a function of j omega is equal to 1 um, replacing s squared with j omega squared, we get a negative sign out, and omega squared, we have 1 minus omega squared lc over j omega c. And it's worth our time to look at this at three different frequencies. First of all, at omega equals zero, we're dividing by zero, and we get then that this impedance goes to infinity as omega approaches, or at omega equals zero. Now, at omega equals one over the square root of LC, or omega equals the square root of one over LC, then we get omega squared is 1 over LC, times LC is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So this filter, or this impedance rather, has a value of 0 at omega equals the square root of 1 over LC. And finally, this impedance, as omega goes to infinity, because we've got an omega squared dependency in the numerator, the numerator grows more rapidly than the denominator does, and this impedance then tends toward infinity as omega approaches infinity. So at low and high frequencies, this impedance is large. And the bulk of the signal will be dropped across here at low frequencies and high frequencies. On the other hand, at that middle range, when omega equals specifically equals uh, the 1 over the square root of LC, this impedance goes to zero. It actually becomes a short circuit. The capacitor and the inductor effectively cancel each other, leaving no net effect. And at that middle frequency, you'll see no voltage across that impedance. So now let's go ahead with the transfer function. It can be shown using voltage division techniques that H of S is equal to S squared plus 1 over LC divided by S squared plus R over LS plus 1 over LC. Or in terms of beta and omega naught, it's equal to S squared plus omega naught squared divided by S squared plus R over LS plus 1 over LC. Whoops, I was wanting to replace that with beta. Um, this then is... Uh, beta s. In fact, we're going to see here in just a second that beta, again, is equal to r over l, just as it was in the passband filter. 
Now the frequency response is equal to, or at least just the magnitude of the frequency response, magnitude of h of j omega is equal to, because we have this squaring term on here, we're going to need to put in absolute values here, the absolute value of 1 over Lc minus omega squared divided by the same denominator that we had for the passband filter, 1 over Lc minus omega squared squared plus r over L times omega quantity squared. And again, just for some intuition, uh, some intuitive understanding here, let's look at what the magnitude of the frequency response function is at the same three frequencies, omega equals zero, mid-range frequency, omega equals infinity. So the transfer or the uh, frequency response function at omega equals zero, omega equals zero, omega equals zero, omega equals zero, we get 1 over LC divided by 1 over LC. Or at omega equals 0, the function here equals 1 at omega equals 0. At omega equals 1 over the square root of LC, plugging in here, Omega squared then is 1 over LC, and you'll have 1 over LC minus 1 over LC goes to 0. So in that mid-range frequency, the transfer or the uh, frequency response function goes to 0 at omega equals the square root of 1 over LC. And finally, the uh, frequency response function, the magnitude of it goes to 1 as omega approaches infinity. And we can see that here. In the denominator, we have an omega to the fourth power dependency. So as omega, gets, as omega gets larger and larger, this term dominates this term. And we then take the square root of this term here, and we end up with 1 over LC. That's an LC minus omega squared in both the numerator and the denominator. So we have the uh, function there equals 1 as omega approaches infinity. The plots of the frequency response of the band reject filter look something like this. As we saw, the maximum values are at lower frequencies and higher frequencies, the maximum value being 1 in this case. And then at that frequency omega naught equaling, at this frequency there, omega naught equaling the square root of 1 over LC, the uh, frequency response actually goes to 0. And so you can see that where it gets the name, the notch, most frequencies are passed except for a narrow band of frequencies which are attenuated and completely attenuated at the center frequency. So given this, oh, I guess we should also point out that the phase of this function starts at zero and goes through a complete 180 degree phase shift as you go from zero to towards infinity um, in frequency. So just to uh, give the whole story now, beta, the bandwidth, is the same as it was for the passband filter, or beta is equal to r over l. As we've already pointed out, omega naught is the same as it was for the passband filter. It's just the square root of 1 over lc. The cutoff frequencies also, omega C1 is equal to negative beta over 2 plus the square root of beta over 2 quantity squared plus omega naught squared. Omega C2 is equal to a positive beta over 2 plus the square root of beta over 2 quantity squared plus omega naught squared. So again, the cutoff frequencies are the same for the notch or the band reject filter as they were for the passband filter. And finally, we have the same quantity Q is simply equal to omega naught over beta. I think it's insightful to overlay the magnitudes of the passband and the band reject 
filters. Here in green we've got the passband filter and in blue we've got the notch filter and as you can see they are um, the complements of each other. They're the complements of each other. Um, where this is one, this is zero, and as this is climbing up, the cutoff frequencies are the same. At this point, half of the signal is dis is uh, passed in the pass band filter, and half of the signal is passed in the band reject filter. But at the center frequencies, they're notched out there. So again, the bandwidths are the same. The center frequency is the same. The uh, lower and, and uh, upper cutoff frequencies are the same and the definition of Q is the same also.